Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the DM fuel economy test on the 2023 Suzuki V-Strom 800DE Adventure. In this test, we're gonna head out and do 41 miles of mixed driving, some city, some aggressive driving, some 55 mile an hour cruising, and some highway to try to get a realistic real world fuel economy number for this adventure bike. For those of you who don't know, Suzuki came out with the updated V-Strom 800 models here in 2023. This one, a little bit more of the uh, upgraded specs. So you see we've got the fun spoked wheels here and a metal skid plate underneath. Very solid there. We've got these crash accessory bars and then some heavier metal luggage there. Those are removable, but obviously they're going to impact our fuel economy from both a wind resistance and a weight standpoint. You can get a more street-oriented V-Strom for, I think, 2024 model year, giving you some cast wheels and less of the off-road bits. And you can also get a DE without the Adventure Package that doesn't have some of these bits as well. But I figured we'd leave them all on to kind of give you more of a worst-case scenario, and then they'd go up from there. So the goal of this test is to find a realistic fuel economy number. So when we head out, we're going to ride um, in a balanced manner. So I'm not going to be giving it full throttle away from the stoplights. It's going to be a, a, a moderate ride. Maybe as you might ride if you were commuting on this bike. That's kind of what I had in mind. Maybe I should change this to the DM commute uh, fuel economy test as long as, yeah, because are they still doing MC commute over at site motorcyclist or something like that? <laughs> but I'm going to get over to the gas station here. I'm going to fill it all the way up. We're going to go out and do our test, come right back to the same pump, fill it all the way up to the very top again, and get our fuel economy result as well as a range figure based on the 5.3 gallon tank. Now, so far riding the V-Strom, I've gotten, I think, just under 40 miles per gallon, according to the trip computer. Bringing it to life here. Let's go down to trip one. When we're 70 miles, yeah, look at that, 39.9. Some of those miles have been pretty hard. There's also been a lot of highway riding back from Suzuki HQ on this. So I'm predicting on this test, we might be able to kiss 50, but I think it's it's probably more likely that we're gonna be down uh, maybe like 45 to 48 mile per gallon figure. On my V-Strom 650 that I had back in Michigan, I would regularly see mid 40s but I tend to ride a little bit harder in real life than I test these bikes on the fuel economy test. We are trying to build up a bit of a catalog for these fuel economy tests. So if you wanna check out the first two we've done, check the links below for our CRF 300L rally video and our BMW G310GS, both smaller bikes, obviously. This is our first bigger bike test. A few other things I should point out before we get started. The tire pressures have been set to their placard 33 PSI front, 36 psi rear for solo riding right there so that's what we've got those set to the outside temperature is about 75 degrees fahrenheit and we're going to be running 91 octane so without any further ado let me get the cap on fill it up and head out it is also worth mentioning we've got a few different drive modes on the new v-strom 800 we've got traction control modes power modes and abs modes Power mode shouldn't really affect fuel economy, it just kind of affects throttle responsiveness and how much fuel it gives to the engine, depending on how much you're, you're twisting the throttle. So I'm gonna leave that in the middle. We are topped off on fuel. I'm going to reset the trip two, and we're ready to begin. I'm gonna head out and time lapse the whole trip, so feel free to enjoy, and we'll catch up with you when we get back.
pulling back up to pump number six here. Pretty successful test. I will say that uh, I ran it a little bit later in the day than I should have. Just after four o'clock, that clock is still an hour ahead after daylight savings time switch. Uh, so we did get slowed down on the highway a bit. I tried to make up for it by running when we were going slower on the highway, running in a lower gear to kind of rev it up and make up for the, the change a little bit in average speed. But other than that, pretty smooth test. I'm pretty happy on the V-Strom. In fact, not only did I do this video, that took a little while, but I shot the winding road test right before this, and that took uh, probably an hour or so as well. So I've been on the seat here for a few hours on this bike, and it's still comfortable. The handlebar position is a little wide, so you, you do find yourself, if you're commuting on the bike, riding regularly, you got a very wide shoulder commanding sort of, uh, sort of riding position. If you're a smaller rider, you might not appreciate how wide your arms have to go. The bike was giving us 49.9 miles per gallon for our, uh, our readout there, so it'll be interesting. <laughs> that is almost exactly that 50 mile per gallon number that I was expecting we would get, but we'll see what the pump gives us here as we top it off. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to top your bike off like this regularly, getting it right up to the brim, but for the sake of science, this is just how we have to do it to get uh, repeatable fills both times. That looks like 0.852 gallons going in. Get that closed. I'm gonna run right over here so that we don't take up anybody's space. All right, yeah, the bike's giving us 49.8. And just out of curiosity, how many miles did it say we did? 42, so 0.5 over what we actually did, according to GPS. Just as we were gonna do the calculations, the GoPro died on us. So we're up here finishing up on the phone. We did our calculations already. The 41.5 miles traveled divided by the 0.852 gallons put in is giving us an effective commuting MPG of 48.7 or rounding up to 49 miles per gallon. So it's pretty darn close within a mile per gallon or so of the, the bike's trip computer. And not a bad figure for mixed riding with bags on here. I mean, it's definitely not as good as you're going to get out of something like a single cylinder sort of bike, but I would take that figure and take off the top uh, the side cases maybe put a top case on instead make it a little easier to lane split here in California and you might get a little bit better fuel economy now it looks like I didn't mention earlier but the windshield is in the medium position so maybe with a little adjustment to that you might see a little bit better or worse economy as well you take that 49 mile per gallon figure and multiply it by the 5.3 gallon fuel tank and it's given you an effective cruising range of 250 miles really closer to 260 but we like to round down to the lowest 10 just to give you a little bit of wiggle room there but 250 miles pretty good it's nice having a little bit of extra tank on a bike like this so even if you're loaded up with gear or people you can still go out and have a nice long day of riding thank you all so much for watching if you do want to see more on the v-strom de here check the link below we're going to be shooting our full review some thoughts coming from a V-Strom 650 adventure, my personal bike for a few years. We're also going to be comparing it to the Honda Trans Alp. So yeah, a lot of good content planned for this, and it's a pretty darn good bike in general, so I highly recommend that you check it out. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, ride on. Mm -hmm.